Concord. I got some heat on this mic. Too. There we go. Welcome to Concord Baptist Church. My name is Jamie Allen. I'm Minister of Music here at Concord, and we're glad to have you this morning. Uh, we've got just a couple of announcements, and then we will get into our worship service. Um, let's see, just a couple. Wednesday night, just look in the bulletin in the middle. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to have our normal fellowship meal, but that will be followed by a night of praise under the picnic shelter. We're going to welcome Rebecca. Alexander out to share with us. She's been with us once before, and if you've heard her, you know that it will be a blessing, and a lot of fun will be had, and I feel like there's one more thing we'll talk about. Oh, tonight, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, mothers. I'm glad to be one of the first to tell you that day. I hope I am, and we're glad to have you with us as well. We want you to have a good time with your families this evening, and so tonight there will be no evening services. Spend that time celebrating your moms and remembering your moms and honoring your moms. And uh, cook them something. You know, do something nice for them. Uh, help them sit on the couch for a little while for once. It's, you know, they deserve it, I hear. I hear. Um, no, mine deserves it, and I'm sure yours does too. We're glad to have you again, and we're just so thankful that God is here with us this morning in our presence. Because we know that from our word that God will be with us, God will be amongst us. And we're just so thankful that we have a living God that we can rely on and we can know that he is truthful. And so as we open in prayer, let's just remember that today is all about the Lord. Today is about celebrating what he has done for us. When we think about Mother's Day, we're just thinking about one more gift that God gave us. And so I thank God for my mom. I thank God for my wife. And I thank God for all of you. Father, Lord, we just thank you so much today for being with us. We just thank you so much for being, uh, God, present not only in our lives, which is amazing, but, but, Lord, present here in this service. Let everything we say, sing, and do for you this morning bring glory to your name. Let us keep ourselves out of it. Let every word that Pastor brings light on our hearts, God. Let us open up to what you would have us to hear let us open up our minds to what, what you would have us to think about. God, we love you and praise you. We thank you so much for everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Stand with me as we sing Revelation song.
Father God, we come to you this morning. We thank you again for your greatness. We thank you we always can rely on you. We thank you that you are the King of Kings. But God, you are alive. You are amongst us still. We don't have to worry that you died and you stayed dead, Lord, because you died and three days later you came back. You're here for us here on this earth just like you're waiting for us in heaven. Wherever we go, you are. We just thank you so much for that. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. pleasure to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. And happy Mother's Day to everyone, all our mothers out there. Um, man, it's just such a, like Jamie said, mothers are a gift from the Lord given to us. Amen. I want to um, share with you just a, a brief prayer for mothers um, that was sent to me this week that I, I thought was very beautiful and um, in just a moment, we have a, a gift to give to our mothers as well. And uh, actually, we'll, we'll do that first, and then I'll share the prayer with you. But I want to ask if 
you're a mother in this congregation today, um, or maybe you even play a motherly role in someone's life, I want to ask that you would please stand for us so that we can recognize you. Amen. Hey, let's give them a round of applause. Remain standing. I want to, while, while you remain standing, um, we've got some flowers here that we'd like to recognize you with. And I want to ask if maybe the, the children will uh, bring, a, bring a flower. I mean, come, come forward to us just a moment. And maybe Hannah, you can help out. And uh, maybe Kelly, help out if you don't mind. Uh, giving a flower to a child. And children, I want to encourage you to take one of these flowers right here uh, to one of the ladies standing that's here on the pulpit, just in honor and recognition of you this morning. Say. to share this prayer with you. you all. Right now our soundboard is out for repair, so we have one standing in, so if you don't mind, just bear with us, we're working through some technical difficulties, but if you would, 
bow with me as we pray for our mothers. Loving God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for mothers young and old. We pray for young mothers who give life and count toes and tend to our every need. May they be blessed with patience, with tenderness to care for their families and themselves with great joy. We pray for our own mothers who've nurtured and cared for us. May they continue to guide us in strong and gentle ways. We remember mothers who are separated from their children because of war, poverty, or conflict. May they feel the loving embrace of our God who wipes every tear away. We pray for mothers who have lived through generations, who have set an example of faith and speech and love. May their life continue to speak through mothers following behind them. God, we pray for the women who are not mothers, but still love and shape us with motherly care and compassion. We remember those mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers who are no longer with us, but who live forever in our memory and nourish us with their love. We remember today mothers who perhaps have lost a child. God, may you comfort them and give them strength. And as they continue to pour into the lives of children around them. God, we thank you for the gift of mothers. And may we rejoice and praise you for the gift you've given us and blessed us with. Whether it's a mother or a motherly figure in our life, God, may we cherish them and be ever grateful for the blessing of mothers today. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue on in our mission moment. Again, we want to thank mothers today we, because mothers are on a mission too. Amen. Mothers are on a mission to raise up children in the ways of the Lord. And so many of you do that with grace and with beauty. And uh, so many of you are pouring into the lives of children. And we want to thank you for that. I want to share with you just a, a quick update as we come to our time of uh, a mission moment, and again, I want to invite you to the altar if you'd like to come and, and pray this morning. Um, but right now, there's a, a team from our association, some different pastors, and our associational director, Lon Chinawith. Um, we, we have, uh, there's a team there in Uganda and South Sudan who are serving and sharing the message of Jesus Christ. And um, one of those, uh, or a few of those couples, are Scott and Terry Huffman. And I got a message from Scott yesterday of some things that had been going on. And uh, many of you probably follow him on, on Facebook and are seeing some updates and pictures of how they're serving and reaching people in the refugee camps. But um, he wrote a message from Uganda. And... Um, They've been training pastors and deacons and women and children and youth leaders. And God has been working in supernatural ways through their lives, uh, through biblical teaching and preaching. And yesterday, it says, the youth went out to practice what they had been taught. And they shared the gospel with 70 people and six were born again. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Also, one woman was saved while in the woman's meeting, and he said that Terry and I, hear this, they, they went uh, a week prior to the team coming to, con to be doing some one-on-one -on -one evangelism, but he said, Terry and I have seen Christ save over 180 people in the last 10 days through one-on-one -on -one evangelism. Praise God for that. So... Let's continue praying for Christ Cares for You Ministries, and let's pray for that team while they're there, that they continue to uh, equip and reach new believers in Christ Jesus, um, and that more and more people come to know Jesus Christ and are trained in the gospel of taking the message 
out from there on out. Amen? So if you'd like to come to the altar at this time, I invite you to come and uh, um, come join us at the altar to pray as Bobby, as Bobby comes and leads us in that prayer time. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day again. I'll echo that. Thank God for the godly mother I had in my life. And uh, thank God for sharing. Uh, she's just a great motherly example to so many youth out here. Uh, I just got a couple of praise reports. Uh, Betty Hamrick is doing so well now. Bronnie's mother, Sharon's sister. Uh, she has made a big turnaround. She's able to swallow. Uh, she's just doing much better all the way around. I also have a praise report for Addie that goes to uh, Forest Hunt. And uh, so let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we're going to remember Roger Sams also. He's in intensive care uh, right now in the hospital. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, just thank you so much for mothers. Lord, thank for what they mean in our lives, what they do for us, and the sacrifices that they make. God, just thank you for placing them here on earth for us. Uh, Father, thank you for living in this country where we can come and worship you freely lord thank you for this church the work it does and the outreach that we have to reach those that are lost god help us to continue to do that when we leave the walls here of this church to be a light shining for you to lead others and point others to jesus be with others uh, god that are sick lord be with those that are uh, maybe uh, facing struggles in their lives. Uh, Father, thank you for all the first responders, uh, for all the people that are in service. Lord, be with our leaders of our country. Uh, be with the leaders all over the world with the crisis going on in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, Father, we just have so much to be thankful for, even with times like they are. Uh, thank you that we have a God like you that's so awesome, so full of mercy, love, and grace. And uh, just forgive us, Lord, where we fail you. And help us to be the best Christians that you created us to be. And we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Stand with me again as we sing Great is Thy Faithfulness. We'll sing two verses. Great is Thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. <laughs> there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest not the compassions they fail not as thou hast been thou forever will be great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me, pardon for sin and the peace that endureth, thy own dear presence. 
us to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen. Dear Grace, I just want to thank you for this beautiful day you bless us with, Lord. Lord, I just pray and give you the praise for all the mothers out there, Lord. Thank you again for our Sunday school hour, Lord. I just pray and thank you for all the Sunday school teachers. Lord, I just pray that you'll continue to be with this service. Lord, just be with Pastor Travis as he brings the message today. Lord, we just thank you again. Thank you and thank you for what you have done and what you have caused for uh, women and how you have changed that aspect for women, Lord. Lord, again, thank you for our mothers. Lord, use this offering to keep up uh, building thy kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes. I don't know why God made one bedroom apartments out of state. I don't know why He made hometowns. If it's somewhere I can stay I don't know why he made growing up But I guess that we're all gonna Yeah, I don't know a lot of things But I know why God made mamas For the open arms to fall into For the wind you don't know what to do or the phone call saying, don't forget, I'm always in your corner. For the heart that makes a house a home. For the knowing that you're not alone. For the darling, don't you dare give up, even when you want to. Yeah, that's why God made mama. For putting band-aids on a scraped up knee and wiping tears away. For picking up 
of the pieces when that dream don't go your way for always giving more than taking always knowing what you need and showing you that fighting's always best done on your knees for the, the open arms to fall into for the wind you don't know what to do or the phone call saying don't forget i'm always in your corner for the heart that makes a house home for the knowing that you're not alone for the darling don't you dare give up even when you wanna yeah that's why Mamas, mamas, I don't know why God made living life down here so hard to do, but I know why God made mamas, cause he knew I needed you. For the open arms to fall into, for the wind you don't I'm always in your I'm corner your For the heart that makes a house a home For the knowing that you're not alone That lady is tough. How beautiful. Amen. How's that? Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Are you thankful for mothers? Amen, amen. I want to invite you, if you have your Bibles, to take them out, hold them up, smile at a mother nearby you, and say, I'm glad you're here. When I Say this with me. When I open the Bible, God opens his mouth. It's not just what God has said, but it is what God is saying. I hope you believe that this morning. We're going to be in 1 Samuel today. 1 Samuel. That's in the Old Testament, right before 2 Samuel, in case you wonder. Names can have a beautiful meaning. My wife's name is Hannah. Spelled Hannah, but her parents decided to call her Hannah. Or either that or everybody else is just pronouncing it wrong, one or the other. The name Hannah, Hannah, means a woman of grace. And my wife is certainly that kind of woman, that kind of mother in our passage today. We're going to be look at just a, a portion of a testimony of a mother who, who lived her life of grace, who lived a life full of grace. Hannah was a woman who sought to glorify God in everything she did and said. Her name, her title, is one that carries much weight. And one of the greatest titles given to our Lord, the Lord is the Lord of hosts, or the Lord of the armies. It is a title that in Scripture is used nearly 300 times, but it's found for the very first time in 1 Samuel chapter 1. This title reminds us of the sovereignty of God. He, the, 
that he is on the throne, that he is ruling, that he is reigning. Even when the people of God do not want him to rule, he overrules. And so the events and the people of history of Scripture tell the salvation story. God's gracious plan to send a Savior to the world to die for the sinners of the world. Now, during the, dark day, during the dark days of Judges, there was no king. According to scriptures, everyone was doing what was right in their own eyes. Does it sound familiar, church? In the book of 1 Samuel, God was making preparations as it tells the story of David's preparation for leading up to ruling and reigning on the throne of the people of Israel as God's king. And we see it play out in 2 Samuel where he becomes king. It is through David's family, though, that the line of Jesus, the son of David, another title for Christ, was born. So when we get to books like Samuel, Kings, Chronicles, they record for us the sins and the downfalls of God's people, but they also remind us of who is still in charge who is still on the throne, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? You see, throughout the pages of history, we cannot miss, church, His story. History is really His story. I love what Wearsby says about the book of Samuel when he said, In human history, it may appear to us that truth is forever on the scaffold, and wrong is forever on the throne. But that isn't heaven's point of view. Sometimes, church, we need to be reminded that He is still on the throne. Amen? Sometimes we need to be reminded that He is in control, that He is ruling, that He is reigning. And when the world seems to have lost its way and the nation seems to have run the other way, sometimes we need a reminder that God is still the Lord of the armies. And we need leaders like Samuel who will help God's people be reminded of who they are and what they're called to do. Mothers, let me speak to you for a moment because when you feel like the enemy is winning and you just can't get ahead sometimes, you need to be reminded that God is the God who fights our battles. Amen? It is God who goes before us and He is there to pick you up when you feel defeated. Now, motherhood can be hard sometimes. I'm reminded of a family who had just had their fourth child, all under the age of five. Yeah, some of you are like, oh man, I've been there. I know, I know what that's like. Some friends had sent a playpen over to the family. A couple of days later, they got a thank you note from the mother, the mother of the four kids, and it read like this, just what I needed Thank you so much because I sit in it every afternoon and read and my kids can't even get near me. <laughs> I heard of another one recently about a mother who had spent all day with her kids and nothing was going right. She was exhausted, tired, frazzled. And in the evening, a, a soul winner from the local church came and knocked on the door and she invited him in. And his first question was, how would you like to live forever? And after that long, hard day with her children, she was so worn out, she said, I just don't think I can handle that. Motherhood can be hard. It can be exhausting sometimes. But there is no job, no other job in the world that is as heartbreaking or as rewarding as motherhood. Amen. No other job will have the influence or the impact on the world like parenting does. 90% of teenagers, when asked who influences them the most, still say their parents. And that influence can be a godly one or it can be a worldly one. Today, as we look at the story of a, a woman named Hannah, may we be drawn to be the godly examples that he's called us to be and the people to the people and the children around us. 1 Samuel, we're going to begin in chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. It says, There was a man 
from Ramathim, Zophim, in the hill country of Ephraim. His name was Elkinah, son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives, the first named Hannah, the second, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah was childless. This man would go up from his own town every year to worship, to sacrifice to the Lord of Armies at Shiloh, where Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were the Lord's priests. Whenever Elkinah offered a sacrifice, he often he all he offered whenever Elkinah offered a sacrifice, he always gave portions of the meat to his wife Penina and to each of her sons and daughters. But he gave a double portion to Hannah, for he loved her even though the Lord had kept her from conceiving. Now, before we get further on into our scripture today about a mother who is an example for us here, we need to discuss a little bit of background. First, we have a man here named Ramathiam. Ramathiam has two wives. Now, of course, that begs the question, does the Bible support polygamy? Because we're, we, we hear it all throughout Scripture. We hear it in the Old Testament, but it brings us to a question, does the Bible support polygamy? And the simple answer is no. The simple is no. Is no. Just because something is described doesn't mean it was prescribed. Are you with me, church? So, apparently, Hannah was his first wife, and then she proved to be barren. She proved to be childless, not able to have children. So he married Penina so he could have a family. Now, we don't know why Elkina didn't wait on the Lord. We don't know well why Elkina didn't trust in the Lord to work out his plan. But even Abraham married Hagar. And Jacob ended up with four wives. I don't, I don't know how he would keep them all straight, do you? While polygamy and divorce were not prohibited by Jewish law, according to God's original intent... It was for marriage to be between one man and one woman, and that has never changed. Amen? It's never changed all throughout Scripture. You can see it especially laid out in Genesis from the very beginning. In fact, when we study the lives of men like King David, King Solomon, and others who had uh, many wives, who, who many of them even had concubines, it's revealed that problems always arise from polygamous relationships. Trouble comes on the heels of it. And so one time... A little boy was at, at church, and he told me something uh, that he had gotten for his girlfriend for Valentine's Day. I said, oh, that's, that's so nice of you. He then proceeded to tell me about this other girl that he did not want me to say anything to her about this. And so I asked him, well, why do you need me to keep a secret from her? He said, because she's my other girlfriend, and she probably won't like that. I said, oh boy, you're going to have some problems. The Bible never explains why God allowed men to have concubines. But we know that it was never a part of his original plan for marriage. However, in this culture, unmarried women were completely dependent upon their family members. Such as fathers, brothers, and etc. And for some if for some reason a woman had no family members or a husband had died or divorced her, she would be left with virtually no means of survival. Most of the women were uneducated, unskilled in a trade, so providing for themselves would have been almost, it would have been very difficult, if not near impossible. And they would end up being very vulnerable to those who might prey upon their unfortunate situations. So, for many, becoming a concubine was, being, was like being a wife without the rights of a wife. This was a much more suitable option than prostitution 
or homelessness or even death. At least a concubine would be provided a home and given a, a, a certain amount of care. So perhaps God allowed concubines and in part to provide for women in need, although it was certainly not the ideal situation. And sin is never ideal. Christians should be reminded that just because God allows something, it does not mean that God is pleased with it. Many Bible narratives teach that God can take what some people mean for evil and He can certainly use it for good. Amen. Every year, Elkina took his family to Shiloh. They went to worship together, and together they ate a meal. And this should have been a joyful occasion for Hannah, but rather Penina used this as an opportunity to jab the knife of Heron, Hannah's barrenness into her deeper. As Elkina would give Hannah double portions of the meat from the sacrifice, Penina would make fun of Hannah, the loved wife. Verse 6, it says, Her rival would taunt her severely just to provoke her. But the Lord had kept Hannah from conceiving. Year after year, when she went up to the Lord's house, her rival taunted her in this way, and Hannah would weep and would not eat. Hannah, why are you crying? Her husband Elkinah would ask. Why won't you eat? Why are you troubled? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Now, there are several things that I believe that mothers you can take with you today that we're going to share. And there are also several things that I believe that we can all, every one of us in this room, take with us today out of God's Word. The first thing as we look at this passage, first thing I believe God wants us to hear today is that when the enemy wants you to fall, remain faithful. When the enemy wants you to fall, I want to encourage you to remain faithful. You see, we, were, we read from the story that year after year, Penina mocked Hannah and made fun of her. But Hannah refused to be weighed down by those negative words. She kept her focus on God. Amen? She kept locked in and not on the disappointments from people. Year after year, it says, she kept going up to the Lord's house. It did not matter that she was mocked. It did not matter what others were doing. It did not matter if others were there for the right reasons. It didn't matter what others thought of her. Year after year after year, she kept going up to the Lord's house. She kept being faithful. While the enemy sought to drag her down, she remained faithful to God. It says Hannah went year after year. She didn't have to, but she did. Despite being taunted, despite being made fun of, despite being, having shade thrown her way, Elkina had children with Penina, but he loved Hannah. And when he gave them gifts, he, he couldn't give gifts to Hannah's children because she had none. So he gave her, it says, a double portion. You see, he felt obligated to Penina, but he loved Hannah. And this, no doubt, caused jealousy, bitterness, and then it led to mockery. But Hannah, even, even though these words hurt, they cut deep to the heart we see in the Scriptures. The Bible, it doesn't say that she lashed out, does it? No, it doesn't say that, 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 that she went on over to Benina. It doesn't say that she went on over there and started waving her finger. It doesn't say that she started shaking her head and telling her off. It doesn't say that she went on her Facebook account and ranting and raved about this other lady, her Penina, who just went off on her and is making fun of her or on her Instagram post. No, she was a woman of grace. And even when the enemy wanted her to fall, she just kept right on being faithful. She just kept right on being faithful, faithful to her husband, faithful to the Lord. And church, that's what we're called to do despite the enemy's attacks to bring us down. Sometimes we've got to put out what the world says and just focus on what God says. 
In any situation we find ourselves, church, we should never allow naysayers, discouragers to take our eyes off the cross. We must learn to move on and focus on God in spite of all the distractions around us. Amen. Despite those who hate us, despite those who think we might be crazy. There's probably plenty of people that look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, there's one right there. Despite what people think of us, we've got to keep our focus on the Lord. That's what we're called to do. We must move on. Focus on God despite the distractions around us, despite those who hate us, despite those who, who think we might be out of our mind, despite those who think that, that they are better. We are called to remain faithful to God. In verse 9, it says, On one occasion, Hannah got up, after they ate and drank at Shiloh, the priest Eli was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. Deeply hurt, Hannah prayed to the Lord and wept with many tears, making a vow she pleaded, Lord of armies, if you take notice of your servant's affliction, remember and not forget me. Give your servant a son. I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and his hair will never be cut. While she continued praying, in the Lord's presence, Eli watched her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, and though her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. Eli thought she was drunk, and he said to her, How long are you going to be drunk? Get rid of your wine. No, my Lord, Hannah replied. I'm a woman with a broken heart. I haven't had any wine or beer. I've been pouring out my heart before the Lord. Don't think of me as a wicked woman. I've been praying from the depth of my anguish and resentment. The second thing I, I believe God wants us to hear this morning is we need to take our honest brokenness to the Lord. Our honest brokenness to the Lord. You see, something Hannah did, there was something important that Hannah did and realized. Hannah realized that she could not help herself. Right? Right? She could not fix this problem. She could not help herself, but she continued to go to worship even when she had a problem too big for herself to handle. She continued to be faithful. Her problem was so big it broke her to tears. She was deeply hurt. She wept. She cried. She prayed. It says in verse 16 that she was in her great anguish. And she did what a woman of grace would do. She took her honest brokenness to the Lord. She prayed so hard, so persistently that Eli the priest had thought she had gotten drunk, but rather she was pouring out her heart. She, she was praying quietly, not so everyone else could hear her because she wasn't doing it for anyone else. She was praying desperately. She was quietly praying and going to the throne of the one who needed to hear her. Verse 11 says, Making a vow, she pleaded, Lord of armies, if you'll take notice of your servant's affliction, remember me and not forget me. And give your servant a son, and I'll give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and his hair will, ne will never be cut. Now this is an odd thing to promise God in return for a son. Isn't it? Kind of a, a weird thing. I mean, not, not the part about giving him to the Lord, the part where she adds, if you'll give me a son, I'll never cut his hair. Kind of, would you make that kind of promise to God? Kind of a, a weird thing. But not stated here. This is most likely a reference to a Nazarite vow where she would dedicate him to be set apart for the Lord. Now, we could, we could talk about a Nazarite vow for, for a while now. But that's another sermon for another time. But in brief, there were three requirements in the vow in which you can find in Numbers chapter 3. And one of them was no razor would be used on his head. However, the Nazarite vow, it was usually just for a specified period of time. 
Here, Hannah, she is raising the bar high, and she's saying, I'm going to dedicate my child to the service of the Lord his whole life. She's raising the bar high. And after Samuel was weaned, later on in the book, she fulfilled that promise. And Samuel certainly served the Lord. You see, the good news is Hannah never gives up on God. She never gave up on God. She just kept praying. She kept trusting. She wasn't afraid to be honest with God. Look at verse 15 and 16. She says, I've been pouring out my heart before the Lord. Don't think of me as a wicked woman. I've been praying from the depth of my anguish and resentment. You see, God heard her cries. He heard her cries. And He knew her heart was genuine. It was real. She was crying out in the depth of her anguish. And then verse 17 it says, Eli responded, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant the requests you've made of him. May your servant find favor with you, she replied. And then Hannah went on her way. She ate and no longer looked despondent. The next morning Elkinah and Hannah got up early to worship before the Lord. Afterward, they returned home to Ramah. Then Elkinah was intimate with his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. And after some time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel because she said, I requested him from the Lord. The last thing I want to, that I believe God wants us to hear this morning is that when we pray for God's provision, we need to trust the provider. Amen? When we pray for God's provision, we've got to trust the provider. Church, we have to admire Hannah's faith because she walked away knowing that no matter what, no matter what was going to happen, all was in the Lord's hands. The priest Eli told her to go in peace and blessed her and spoke, asking the Lord to grant the request that she had made. And it says, Hannah went on her way and she ate, and her spirits were raised, and she had hope. She had courage. It says in verse 18 that she went on and no longer looked despondent. The next morning, her and her husband get up early to do what? What does it say? Worship. Yeah. Before God had even answered her prayers... She got up with her husband to go and worship. She was remaining faithful before God could even give her any assurance. She was trusting that He was going to, be, to provide. And when the Lord did provide, she remembered that it was His provision who brought her to motherhood, not her own doing. Verse 20, at some time... Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel because she said, I requested him from the Lord. I requested him from the Lord. The Hebrew word for Samuel, it means heard of God or asked of God. All of his life, Samuel was both an answer to prayer and he was also a great man of prayer. In chapter 2, Hannah goes on to pray to God and she gives him thanks and remembers his faithfulness. In 1 Samuel 2, chapter 2, verse 2, it says, There is no one holy like the Lord. There's no one besides you. And there's no rock like our God. Hannah was recognizing God's ultimate sovereignty and that God's faithfulness prevailed, that He was the one who provided for her. You know, prayer, church, prayer is a time of refreshment. Howard Taylor said of his father, Hudson Taylor, For 40 years, the sun never rose on China that God did not find him on his knees. Man, what a beautiful testimony to prayer, amen? For 40 years, he said about his father, The sun never rose on China that did not find him on his knees. During trying times, church, remembering God's faithfulness, it will strengthen us, it will encourage us, it will remind us that He has not abandoned us. After God granted Hannah the blessing of her son Samuel, she continued to give God praise.
when we hold an unwavering commitment to pursue God in prayer and thanksgiving for His blessing, it keeps us connected, it keeps us encouraged, and, that, and it keeps us reminded that He provides what we need. You know, there are 169 verses in the Bible that refer to the ways God provides for us. Philippians 4.19 puts it simply when it says, My God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And He also differentiates between our needs and our wants. Because He knows according to Matthew 6, where our treasure, there our heart will be also. So He knows what we need and He knows what we want. And certain passages give us an assurance that God's love and direction began even before conception. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15 says, But when God, who from my mother's womb set me apart and called me by His grace, was pleased. In Jeremiah 1 5, I chose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. What a gift to know that God has been involved in our lives from the very start, from conception. Amen? His love for us is encapsulated in His desire for our highest good. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. The Lord who provides. And God's provision, it extends to His ongoing relationship to His creation which is deeply, deeply dependent upon Him. You know, so many times we take for granted that the rain falls. So many times we take for granted that the sun comes up every morning. So many times we take for granted the refreshing winds that blow and the tides that cleanse our shores and invigorate the life of our humongous ocean. But all these things are watched over by our loving God as He provides for us. Amen? All these things are under the sovereignty of God. He provided just what we need. The greatest need of all humanity in all of history and all of His story was the need for a Savior. A substitute sacrifice for sin. In God's story, without it, there can be no forgiveness of sin. Only God can forgive sin. So He came in flesh. He came as Jesus Christ. He died in our place. And He provided the substitute atonement that we needed. Exactly what we needed, church. And that was grace. That was grace. Ephesians 1.7 says, In Him we have Redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace. Hannah was a woman of grace. She was a woman of grace. But it is only the grace of God through the sacrifice of Jesus that could pardon all our sin. It is only through the grace of Jesus that we can be saved. If you've never received this beautiful gift of God's grace that God offers, I invite you this morning. I invite you to come this morning and begin your journey with Jesus. When you surrender to Him, the provider provides. He provides eternal life. And life with Him, beginning with Jesus, not just, not just for eternity, but you begin a life with Jesus Christ right now. And that, my friends, is the great gift of grace that God offers us. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your great grace. Lord, we thank you for the example of, of Hannah, a woman of grace, as she lived out your gracefulness, God, your love and mercy that you gave us on the cross of Calvary. God, we thank you for what you did on the cross for our sins, that you died in our place and gave us eternal life for those who surrender it to him. God, I pray if there be someone here today that doesn't know you, 
in a personal way. God, that they would surrender their life over to you today. God, we pray that they would embrace your forgiveness and embrace your grace. That you offer freely. That you paid the price for. Father, I pray that if there's someone here today that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, God, that they would come forward today. They would acknowledge and surrender to you as Jesus, Lord of all. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand and sing this invitation with us today? in prayer as we just miss this one. Father God, we come to you this morning to lift up the Lord and give you glory. We thank you again for Mother's Day, Lord, for the mothers you have blessed us with, for the mothers we have lost, God, that are with you already. We just, uh, we're thankful for your promise of eternal life, God, what you gave us, what you offer up to everyone freely, Lord. I pray if someone ignored that calling this morning, if they ha- felt that tug and ignored it, Lord, I pray that they don't waste the rest of the day, that they accept you into their hearts, Lord, that they accept the greatest gift ever given. God, we just love you and we praise you. We ask that you bring, that we bring glory to your name through our actions and words. Help us not be a hindrance to you, Lord. If we are, get us out of your way. In Jesus' name I pray.